So, a very long time ago now, at least as far as the world of YouTube's concerned, I made a video about the lead character of Miraculous Ladybug, Marinette Dupain Cheng, and addressed a long-running criticism of her character, whether or not she's a Mary Sue. Now, for those that may be unaware, a Mary Sue is a character archetype that usually crops up in fiction, and especially in fan fiction, who is often a young woman who's portrayed as inexplicably competent at everything, often possessing unique talents and powers, is extremely popular with the majority of other characters in that universe, is attractive, virtuous, and pretty much lacks any meaningful flaws that offset all that greatness. In short, they pretty much originated as an author self-insert, would be awesome and great, and like, you can literally see that appear in so many different works by authors of such different demographics. It's a very tempting thing. For men, often they're those awesome giga chads with big muscles who get all the ladies, or the edgiest of edgelords who also somehow pull all the ladies. And of course, these women get a full page describing their figure. Ugh. Yeah, that's the Gary Stew. And it's cringe. And the Mary Sue is not much different, it's just the female version. And we're here for the Mary Sue. They're cringe, self-inserts, more often than not, with many of those same weird identifiers. But they're not always a self-insert. I wouldn't try to argue that Marinette is a self-insert of Asterix. That would be pretty weird. But in a lot of cases, they're just a symptom of bad writing, of a writer being unable to have their precious baby that they've worked so hard on take any L whatsoever. And so they always have them overcome any obstacle and shoehorn in new skills and abilities to keep them looking cool and relevant. It just makes them the best. Like, I'm not a writer, but I understand it's probably an easy trap to fall into. Like, for example, I play video games. And in video games, there's often a moral choice you have to make, a way to play your character. And I am literally incapable of doing anything mean or cruel because I feel bad for the characters in the game if I'm mean to them. And so my character is always morally right. And I feel like it might be a similar concept for people writing characters for books or TV. Even if they're not that self-insert, they're still their character and they want them to succeed. Unless it's Chloe or something like that. <laughs> I mean, Asterix dedicated his life to making her the anti-Sue. No talents, nobody likes her, fails at everything, and absolutely zero features that redeem her laundry list of flaws. Man, I mean, she's nothing but flaws. Anyway, moving on. Like I said earlier, the Mary Sue is a very common archetype for some of the reasons that I just explained. And for a long time, there was a whole heap of discussion about how Marinette, at least in the early days of the show, was a bit of a Mary Sue. It was a contentious issue in the fan base, with many people thinking that she was an open and shut case of one, and many people believing the opposite of that. A big argument all around. And so back in the day, I waded into it, and I made a video discussing that very topic. And like the fence sitter that I am, I decided, eh, sort of. I felt that in many ways, she was overly and supremely talented and beloved by all. Her flaws, such as her clumsiness and whatever, they were mostly superficial. They didn't impact anything for the most part. Yes, she might make a mistake in the episode, but she instantly fixes it, and so it's all fine. There's no stakes there. And so in that way, she gets the star treatment from the writing. She's always right. She's the one with the super magical powers. She's more powerful than any other user to come before her being able to use more Miraculouses at once than anybody, according to Fu, and she whoops the villains every day of the week. She drags Cat Noir's sorry ass across the finish line again and again, and is the special chosen one to be the new guardian. And these virtues were only really offset by her romantic failures. That was her main flaw that lingered throughout the seasons. Although even then, it was very clear that this wasn't a long-term thing. This was padding for time, because Luca and Adrian were both actively crushing on her in her civilian and her hero personas, respectively. And we all knew that eventually she was going to succeed. So yeah, she, she really did have a lot of Mary Sue traits at that point. I mean, not fully. I still stand by that decision to say, not quite. But she definitely had a lot of the traits. But yeah, that's in the past now. No changing that. And I'm pretty sure in that video, I only took into account the events of seasons 1, 2, and 3. And they were certainly a different time for the show. And since then, we've had like two seasons, three specials, and a whole reboot film in the meantime. And so with that, at long last, came some development. Some story development. Things moved on. There was a change in the status quo that in turn impacted Marinette's character. And also her Mary Sudum, you'd expect. 
And so that's what the rest of the video is going to be about. With where we're at at the end of Season 5, is it now fair to call Marinette a full-blown Mary Sue? Has she remained on the same level as she was before, or has it gotten better? Okay, so we just got to head back to that definition of a Mary Sue, and we'll work our way through it to see if she's ticking those boxes still. Okay, so inexplicably competent at everything. Okay, so in Season 4, the big story point was that she sucks, pretty much. Or at least, that's the story point at the start. Because after all the build-up during Season 3, where she sees everything go pretty much her way, she builds up the big hero team, she claps Gabe at every turn, she's chosen to be the next Guardian because she's such a chad, and even got a date with Luca, it all pretty much rapidly crumbled away for her in Season 4. Her relationship bombs because she can't be honest with Luca, and her mental health deteriorates during the opening of the season, as she struggles under the weight and responsibility of being the Guardian and having no one to confide in. She can't juggle it all. And this, in turn, forces her to bring Alia in on the secret to ensure she has the support she needs. So yeah, that's something. That's a flaw. It impacts the story. It makes Alia a more important character because she's her emotional support. That's a big change. She isn't on top of things the entire time. She has to show her weakness. Yes, it wipes away some of the stink of the Mary Sudom, only to immediately move into more contrived storytelling because all of that happens in the first three episodes. And all the while, she's still whooping ass, she's still saving the day, pretty much single-handedly. As I feel like in Season 4, we did see an increase in the number of times the Cat Noir comes out of an episode looking so useless and pathetic. Whereas Marinette carries the team with the help of Alia. She cements herself as a true top-tier guardian, even managing to put Su Han in his place, telling him to sit down, old man, I got this. Hell, at the end of the day, when you look at it in Season 5, who was it that single-handedly fought the final battle against Monarch whilst Adrian was crying in his padded cell? That's right. Man, that still makes me salty every time I think about it, though. Woohoo! <laughs> so yeah, she remains a massive prodigy. She remains the spotlight of the show. She always wins. She's pretty much always right. And they really just hammer that message home throughout Season 4 and Season 5. To the point that I don't think it's even bad writing, as in like, oh, I accidentally wrote this badly. I think they're just choosing to make it like this. It's their conscious choice. So you can think it's bad, you can think it's good, but at least they're not doing it by accident, if that makes anything better. Next up on the checklist, often possessing unique talents and powers. Hmm, so she's a fashion prodigy, she's a gaming prodigy, and that one just comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? She gets elected class rep because she's so trustworthy and awesome. She handles that very well, very responsible and smart, despite the fact that she's always late to class, and you'd think would have not as much time to actually do schoolwork because she's always superheroing, but she manages to somehow get around that and not collapse in a ball every day. She has the miracle box and is the best user ever, apparently, and one of the better guardians. Her personal Miraculous, the Ladybug, it has the most functions, creation, and reversing damage. And she also randomly unlocks a new power to create to the limit of her imagination or some bullshit like that, which was literally only done so she could make protection charms and seem even more impressive because she can fend off Akumas herself. And you can tell that they only did this to make her seem more impressive because Gabe instantly learns how to overcome it so they can keep having him be the villain thereby negating the whole storyline because now he has Mega Kumas, which are exactly the same. Let's be real. And so it very much feels like it was included solely to make Marinette seem super powerful and super awesome, and for no other reason than that. So I think we've well and truly checked the first two boxes here, but how much further can we push this? Okay, so liked by the majority of other characters. Yes, Marinette is actually super popular. The movie tries to kind of retcon that, but in the show itself, she is so popular. She's able to remain friends with the guy whose heart she broke. That's how popular and cool she is. How she even becomes the best friend of her romantic rival in Kagami. Zoe pretty much has an instant crush on her. Adrian falls in love with her twice, once for each version. And pretty much everybody thinks she's the bee's knees, except for the actual terrible, awful sociopathic villains who have no moral fiber. Chloe, Gabriel, Lila, actual trash people. People whose opinions the show doesn't even want you to take seriously. So there's that. Man, she's coming out of this looking very suish at the moment, huh? Then we have attractive and virtuous and lacking in flaws. Okay, attractive, uh, I'm gonna skip past that because one, she's underage. I don't care if she's in animation. I'm not playing there. And it's also subjective, right? But yeah, the show never really says it. Uh, okay, I can touch on it. The show never really says it, but objectively she has to be attractive, right? She has to have some severe game. Nathaniel, Nino, 
Luca, Zoe, Adrian, they're all into her at some point during the show. Girl has the X factor. You know what I'm saying? Virtuous. Well, yeah, no shit, she's virtuous. It's Marinette we're talking about. And then lacking in real flaws. And this is where it all comes together. No matter how weirdly perfect a character's written, if you counterbalance it with flaws, I think you can still salvage things and not have your character come across too strong. And they did start well with this. Like I said earlier, she has the mental health struggles and a relationship breakdown at the start of season four. And then at the end of season four, they have the huge fail moment where due to her blind love for Adrian, she gets bamboozled by Felix and loses all the miraculouses. And this in turn kicks off the next season, which, oh well, that was actually really good. A significant flaw that's exploited by the antagonist and costs them dearly. It has an impact on the plot and drives the story into that final climactic season. That's actually really good, and I think it's enough to push her away from being 100% Sue. But beyond that, does she have many other glaring flaws that actively hamper her character's journey in a way that matters to the plot? I mean, she crashes and burns a couple times with Adrian and their relationship, but, like, that's clearly just there for drama and to extend the season to 22 episodes or whatever it was. Because honestly, you look at it, and she's not really that flawed during the final season at all. She's mostly just taking win after win and outclassing her enemies at every turn. Even Gabe, who has God mode on in the last season. A man who has basically all the miraculouses, has so many abilities and combos at his fingertips. He gets clapped again and again and again because Precious Marinette cannot lose. Even when he objectively has to win, like when he has the time travel, the plot forces him to lose so that she doesn't. Hell, remember that time that he had the snake and he kept reversing things? And you see that across all the different episodes, he'd reverse things again and again and again, only for Marinette to destroy him no matter what he does. Now that's some Sue. And so yeah, I don't think she's a full Mary Sue, but she's developed into more of one as the story's progressed. Or at least she has in my opinion. And yeah, I get it. That's the genre and the audience they're going for. A lot of superhero things are kind of like that, if we're being honest. But still, I think there is a lot of room to dial it back. And I hope they do that going forward. Because I just think a more flawed character who has an underdog vibe is far more compelling. I mean, isn't it a bit weird when your main villain, who is like a billionaire, has a super base, has all the miraculouses, and is just ruthless and awful, feels like the underdog? How you tying yourself into a pretzel to do that, Asterix? How you doing this? <laughs> so I guess, yeah, that's it for today. And so to shamelessly rip off the Princess Bride, she ain't a Mary Sue, she's simply mostly Sue. Well, it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. So with all that being said, these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. Do you think Marinette's a Mary Sue? Yes, no? Do you agree with what I've said? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.